Did you ever wonder what would happen if Aaron won against the Alliance and destroyed the entire world? What would happen to the Paradise Island and his friends? Would Aaron manage to finally bring true peace to his people, or would it all be in vain? Well, before we talk about what exactly would happen, let's first quickly cover three ways Aaron could have easily won in the final battle. For example, the very first and obvious thing Aaron could have done is not allow his friends to use their abilities. The only ones who had a real chance to take him down were the other Titan Shifters, and depriving them of their power would have been an easy win for Aaron. But how would he even do this? Well, back in the paths, when Aaron convinced Emir to lend him her strength, he unlocked all the abilities of a founding Titan. Using those, Eren could have easily modified all the Eldians as he pleased and stopped other Titan Shifters from using their powers. After this, no one in the world would be able to stop him, as the regular weapons do pretty much no damage to Eren and his army. In this scenario, it's most likely that the Alliance would still try to pursue Eren and make him change his mind, but without their Titan powers, they wouldn't get very far and would most likely die at Paradise's harbor way before they ever had a chance to talk to Eren. Although the decision to steal his friend's titan powers would allow him to easily destroy the entire world, you have to agree that it doesn't really seem like something Eren would actually do, as he always wanted to give his friends the freedom to fight back. However, there are still two more ways Eren could have easily won in the final battle, and this next one is even simpler than the previous one. Back when Eren started the rumbling, Flock immediately knew that his friends would try and stop him, so he captured Kiyomi and the engineers in order to prevent the Alliance from using the ship. Although Flock was well prepared for this battle, there wasn't much he and his soldiers could do against two experienced Titan shifters like Annie and Reiner. So in the end, Flock could only buy Eren some time. But what if I tell you that Eren could have done one really simple thing that would pretty much ensure his and Flock's victory? Eren could have easily left a few colossal Titans to help Flock guard the harbor and stop the Alliance from pursuing him. With the presence of the colossal Titans, it'd be pretty much impossible for the Alliance to win this battle. Even if they find a way to somehow defeat the Colossal Titans, it still wouldn't matter, as Flock would have more than enough time to sink the ship before anyone gets on board, just like he wanted to do in the original story, but was stopped by Gabby. This would make it impossible for the Alliance to follow Eren and would lead to him destroying the entire world with no one standing in his way. But I guess Eren didn't really think of that and chose not to help his biggest supporter, which ultimately resulted in Flock dying. Poor guy, all he ever wanted was to help Eren. Hit the subscribe button to make him feel better. Anyway, even though Eren didn't take his friend's powers and even though he didn't help Flock in the harbor, he still should have easily won against the Alliance in the final battle by doing basically nothing. Let me explain. One of the biggest reasons Eren lost in the end was because Zeke died and the rumbling stopped. This meant that the Alliance didn't have to worry about marching colossal titans anymore and could focus all their strength on taking Eren down. Now, at first, it may seem that there's nothing wrong with this, but if you think about it for a moment, there's actually no reason for the rumbling to stop after Zeke's death. Let's go back and take a look at a few moments from the anime so you can understand exactly what I mean. Firstly, when Zeke and Eren came into contact, both of them were transported to paths where Zeke was able to negate King Fritz's vow to renounce war. After that, Zeke gained full control of the Founder's abilities, which he was going to use to euthanize Eldians. However, Eren managed to convince Emir to give him the powers in exchange for giving her the freedom that she deserved. Considering the fact that Emir herself decided to support Eren, Zeke's importance here no longer matters, and his death shouldn't have caused the rumbling to stop. Emir is the one who gives the powers to Titan Shifters, and she should have been able to easily continue the rumbling if she wanted to. Now, some fans believe that despite Amir's wishes, Eren still needs to be in contact with someone with royal blood in order to keep using the Founder's powers. But that's not really true. You see, back when Eren touched Dina Fritz and used the coordinate for the first time, he commanded nearby Titans to devour her. After a few moments, Dina was dead, meaning that the connection he had with royal blood also ended, and he shouldn't be able to control the Titans any longer, right? Well, not really, because even after the physical contact, the Titans still pursued Berthel and Reiner instead of the soldiers. Unlike the situation in the final battle, where killing Zeke immediately stopped the Colossal Titans, Dina's death didn't yield immediate results, and Eren was still able to command the Titans for a much longer time. If we consider this and the fact that Eren had Amir's 
full support in continuing the rumbling, it really doesn't make sense for it to stop so suddenly. Due to the complexity of the Attack on Titan story, there's probably some way you could try to explain this. But the fact is that if this weird thing didn't happen, the Alliance would have no chance of winning, and Eren would continue the rumbling until the whole world is destroyed. With that, we covered three things Eren could have done to win in the original story. But now comes the interesting part. What would happen after that? Well, after researching the Attack on Titan story for a long time, I found two possible ways the story could go from here. And the second one will completely blow your mind. After the Colossal Titans finished their march, all the Alliance members would be dead from fighting the Titan shifters Eren created. Initially, Eren's main goal was to be free and grant that same freedom to his family and friends. Now, however, having lost everyone he ever cared about, Eren would fall into depression and start questioning himself and his actions. Still, having a strong sense of duty. Eren wouldn't just give up now and would decide to modify the remaining Eldians to completely eradicate the curse of Amir and prevent any more casualties caused by the power of Titans. This was always Eren's intention, and now that there is nobody in the world capable of hurting Eldians, it's finally the right time to do it! After that, Eren would convince Historia to rule the people of Paradis as their one and only queen, while he goes into hiding. This would work well with Eren's character, as he never had intentions of ruling or being worshipped. He just wanted to do what was best for his people, and now that his plan has succeeded, there's no reason for him to show himself anymore. The remaining survivors on the island would probably work towards building a modern civilization similar to Marley and the rest of the world. Although this kind of seems like a happy ending for the Eldian people, it won't stay like this forever. You see, although there are some people who supported Eren's decision, there were many others who were against it. Even though there isn't an outside threat anymore, with time, it's inevitable that new conflicts will eventually arise, and peace will be broken once again. There's a quote from the anime that perfectly summarizes this. When Titans were the greatest threat, Titans were the enemy. When countries were the greatest threat, countries were the enemy. For as long as people hold firm to different beliefs, there will always be an enemy. In the end, achieving eternal peace was never a real possibility. And finally, let's cover the most interesting scenario yet. Here, Eren will embody his true character of a villain, the one we see throughout the final season of Attack on Titan. During this season, Eren seemed like someone who was fully engrossed in his own ambitions to the point that he became a completely different person. However, in the end, during his conversation with Armin, we learn that Eren did this because he wanted to carry all the burden by himself so his friends could be free. In this scenario, he'll stay true to his villain character and will take the whole burden of destroying the world on his shoulders. We can all agree that Eren's actions near the end of the show were questionable, but his main goal was always to grant his people something he himself could never achieve, freedom with no guilt. After destroying the entire world, Eren would use his powers to make one final decision, completely wipe away memories of all subjects of Amir. He would make sure that no one remembers the rumbling and the outside world, completely freeing them from all terrible things such as war and conflicts. This will allow Eldians to freely explore the world like Eren always wanted to do with Armin and Mikasa, granting them true freedom. King Fritz has tried to do something similar in the past when he created the walls and brought his people to Paradise Island. However, in this case, there were still a bunch of threats outside the walls like Titans, Marley, and pretty much the whole world. Eren's decision, although similar, has a much better chance of succeeding and bringing peace to his people. Ultimately, Eren would also free everyone from the Curse of Amir and the power of Titans, ensuring that history never repeats itself again. Wiping the memories will help Eren blend in with everyone and try to live a normal life. However, as the sole bearer of his terrible actions and memories of friends he lost, it's unlikely that he'll ever be truly happy.